It is Keith here. You got Keith Billis live in the lab. Live in the Business Athlete Performance Lab. Coming to you on a, wow, it's Tuesday on the calendar. But like we know as entrepreneurs, it's Tuesday, it's Wednesday, it's Monday, it's Friday. It's every single, single, it's just every single same day of the week. But it is Tuesday. So if you're watching us live on YouTube, again, Monday to Friday, noon, minus five GMT. So to all my family that's tuning in today for the first time because of Thanksgiving dinner last night, it's okay, everybody, subscribe to dad's channel. Kids are rolling their eyes saying, dad, really? I'm like, yeah, really? You guys want to get new gear this year? You got to subscribe to dad's channel so we can get paid by YouTube. Monday to Friday, noon central time. We also publish out on LinkedIn too. So uh, you'll see us live on LinkedIn, live on YouTube, Monday to Friday, of course. And you can get all the extra stuff over on uh, YouTube, LinkedIn, X, and so forth. I'm excited about today's show. We have a fellow, Eric Degotti, performance coach, strength coach, fitness coach, speaker. I look at his list of accomplishments in terms of where he's been at. He works with clients who've been Olympic gold medalists. He's, we're going to have a great chat. Those that know me and know kind of what I stand for in terms of mixing business and athletics and performance and love to start my day in the gym. I think Eric and I are going to have a, going to have a great chat coming up. So Eric Degotti, stay tuned for that in, in a few moments. But I want to talk about what we have been talking a lot about lately, which is the League of Business Athletes transformational experience coming up in 2024 as you know we've been pumping it out on the feeds and we're talking about it i got people knocking on my door people phoning me up saying keith tell me about this transformational experience so i'm going to take a couple of minutes to talk about it with you guys today before we bring eric in and it starts january 1st so it's not a 30-day program it's not a 60-day program it's not a hey i have a i have an idea for a resolution and i want to get a six-pack that's awesome and i applaud you if you want to go get a six-pack and I applaud you if you want to have a resolution. But we're thinking much bigger than that over here. We're thinking much bigger than that. So you're going to start January 1st with us in the lab, in the team in the lab here. You got Craig, you got AJ, you got Ray, and other uh, some of our other professionals. They're going to coach you for 365 days. We're going to put you on a personalized nutrition plan, fitness plan, wellness plan, emotional plan, business plan, accountability plan, and, and essentially welcome you into the League of Business Athletes. Only 10 of you, limited space. Starting Dece- we're starting January 1st. We're going to go all the way till December 31st. We're going to essentially hold your hand, but not hold your hand. But we're going we're gonna to go through this experience together. And let me tell you, you still got to go to work. You still got to raise your kids. You still got to live your life. But we're going to help you perhaps through the ups and downs of the year to create some structure. Yes, we know that success comes from structure. Structure equals success. So... We're going to help provide that structure to your life through the whole year to achieve that structure here in the lab through Transformation 24. We're going to punctuate the year by doing some pretty damn cool things. We're going to meet in Panama, Panama, in January to climb Volcan Baru. Now you say climb. Keith, what do you mean climb? Now, we're actually going to trek. So we're going to up the mountain. No crampons, no ropes, just walk. Pole, pole, up the mountain. Up, same day. We we'll leave by uh, I think 6 a.m. We'll be at the top of the mountain by noon, 1 o'clock. I know I've done it. And then we're going to walk all the way down. We'll be back by 5, 6 o'clock. It is spectacular. The only place in the world you can see the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean at the same time. The only place. The only place. So that's what we're going to do in January. Then we're all going to go back to our regular lives and go back to work and go back and raise our children and do what we have to do. Go through our professional life. Then we're going to meet in the Azores thinking the Azores. Eric's thinking Azores? What's he talking about the Azores? Well, the Azores are just off the coast of, of New York, off of Portugal, right in the middle of the Atlantic. West of Portugal, east of Jersey, in the middle of the Atlantic, this mountain pops up. And if you drain the Atlantic, it would be the highest peak on the planet. It's Mount Pico. So that's the next step in this journey. So we're going to climb Mount Pico. We're going to leave early afternoon, be up there mid-evening. And then we're going to sleep in the crater at the top. No light pollution. All you see is stars and Elon's network of satellites, of course. But regardless of that, we'll get up in the morning, 5, 6 a.m., we'll climb to the top of the mountain, and we're going to see the Atlantic and the other islands of the Azores. Spectacular experience. Then we're all going to go back again. Going to continue our journey with fitness, nutrition, wellness, emotional support, business support, as you transform and ascend your life through 2024. We're then going to meet in the big dog. End of September, early October, we're all going to go climb to the top, guaranteed, 
of Mount Kilimanjaro. Yep. We're going to pulley, put one foot in front of the other, and make our way to the top of Kilimanjaro. All 10 of us in the group. So don't even think you're not going to do it or you can't do it because you will do it. By the time you climb Baru, by the time you climb Pico, you're ready to do Kilimanjaro. Pico's the warm-up. It's the overnight. you got to carry your stuff to the top. Kilimanjaro is a 9, 10-day climb. Spectacular experience. But we aren't done yet. So after we've done all those excruciating activities throughout the year, we're going to go back to work, go back to our lives, and we're going to end the experience in a retreat. We're going to reflect upon the year. But we're going to do it in a way that is going to frankly transform your life in one stitch of time you are going to spend time with the animals in kenya we're going to do safariing on the mara safariing in lua we're going to see rhinoceroses giraffes elephants we're going to see hippopotamuses we're going to do day safaris night safaris and we're going to make our way to the magical beaches of shayla beach on lamu island in east kenya to wrap the whole thing up so, if you've stuck around to hear this whole experience, I invite you to reach out on me on LinkedIn, hit me up on email, come knock on my door, give me a phone call, who phones people these days, but phone me. We'll talk this through, we'll help you get involved. Limited space available, the League of Business Athletes Transformation Experience 2024. We're talking a lot about it, and uh, I hope you'll consider joining us on this. And maybe Eric Degatti will consider joining us on this, as I'm going to bring him in into the room into the lab. Eric, welcome to the Business Athlete Performance Lab. Welcome to Live in the Lab. Thanks for having me, Keith. Yeah, so it looks like you were in the lab yourself. A little bit, a little bit. I've always called the gym. It's much more of a lab than it is just a, a place where we store weights. Yes, that's exactly it, a place where we, I always like to joke with people. I like picking heavy things up and putting them down for my life, and clearly you have that same idea. Why do you call it the lab, the metaphor of the lab? It's the same way I call it because it's all about experimenting and it's all about just trying something new all the time, and is that where your metaphor comes from? Uh, yeah, and that I'm going on year 25 of, of training and coaching people, and the longer I do it, the less I realize that I actually, and that we all really know, and that it's all just an educated guess. And the magic is figuring out, did I guess right today? And I, my guesses have gotten much better uh, after working with, with people where I can't guess wrong, right? Where there's millions of dollars on the line and, and, and those sorts of things. But again, it's just a guess. The human body is one of the most fascinating, mysterious things that you can possibly imagine. And anybody that goes on social media and tells you they got it all figured out and take this one pill or do this one exercise is, you know, run the other direction because there's no way you can nail it down to that, to that, just that simple. That's what I love about the, this industry, the fitness, nutrition, wellness, performance industry is it really is about trying, isn't it? So what, just because one thing works for you doesn't mean it's going to work for me, right? And it's taken me a long time in my life to figure that out. Talk about your experience. You've been doing this for 20 years, you said. So take me through that first client 20 years ago to your client today, how your approach has changed, how you use your experience over the last 20 years. There's a lot of fears, Eric, that AI is going to wipe out the coaching business. But I look at your experience and your 20 years mean something. So talk about that first client to your most recent client and how that's changed for you as a coach. Yeah, the, the, the thing that always fascinated me when I first started out and I started in this big box gym and they just kind of threw me on the floor and said, you know, Technically, I got a job, but I think technically to have a job, you have to get paid. Uh, I didn't really have a job. They said, you can work the floor and get clients if you like. And now, but you're going to have to compete with 18 other trainers on the floor who are all competing for, you know, fishing out of the same pond. And what I noticed really early on is that the bar was set super, super low in terms of expectations of what people expected from themselves, what people expected from a coach and expected out of fitness, quite frankly. And so I knew there was something more to it than just... I'm going to be, one, as I'm going to be a rent-a-friend for the hour. Two is that I'm going to just show you exercises and count for you. Because I saw, like, well, that's kind of pointless. What do you pay me for that for? Like, you can get that for free on YouTube, and you can get a friend to count for you. Like, I need to deliver something more than that. And so I didn't know how to do it day one, but I just knew that's a part of what I wanted to do, and I knew that I needed to deliver more than just showing you exercises. I was showing you a path. Now... That hasn't changed. I just have better shortcuts on how to get there. The, the principles haven't changed. It's just that there's a lot of things I didn't even know to, to look for, let alone know that I missed 25 years ago that I don't know now. And 10 years from now, there'll be more things that I'm missing today that I didn't even know existed. 
and I'll have better metrics and better systems and checklists to make sure I don't miss those things. But that's really is that people expect too little of themselves. People expect too little of coaches and they expect too little of, of what fitness can deliver to them. Follow me on this one. I've wondered for a long time whether rappers and coaches are the same when it comes to aging. And hear me out. When you're a young fitness coach, you're the young fitness coach who's got bravado. He's, you know, he's, I'm going to go and change the world and get all my athletes. But then you say to yourself, how do I age as a fitness coach? Am I going to be the 50 year old or 60 year old guy in the gym coaching people, right? Just like the rapper is, you know, do we want to hear from the 30 year old billionaire or 40 year old billionaire rapper who's, who rapped his way you know, by talking about, you know, his, the bravado that got him there. But as we have matured with social media and, and we see, you know, the coaching industry, what it is today, and as technology is over is prevailing up, upon us, I would suggest to you, Eric, that the value you as a fitness coach as you age is probably better than ever. And I say that as a compliment because your experience, the, the successes, the failures, the, the shortcuts you've learned, that is, has more value today than it ever has. Yeah, you can find knowledge through things like AI for free. You can't get wisdom. And so that's why I'm not scared of, of going out of business anytime soon because you can't, AI can't see what I've seen and can't see, okay, well, that works sometimes and it doesn't work other times because we're not training side, right? We're not doing that. We're working with people that are living, breathing organisms that have a, a, a brain and a mind and a, and a spirit that's connected to it that is very unpredictable. And so you have to learn how to adapt and how to read and how to interact and how to really draw the best out of people and know when to push the pedal down. Know when, and those are things that, that you don't get from reading a book or taking a workshop unless you have someone who's imparting wisdom to you as opposed to just teaching you knowledge. There's a lot of things I can teach you methods and methods are, are, are plenty, but the principles are few. And that's, you know, you know, when I coach other trainers based on just principles of how you put together programming from what I do before you even walk in the door that you will never see, but is going to essentially make you successful. And then all the things I'm going to do once you walk out the door that you won't see, that's going to make you successful. And that separates me from somebody that could get replaced by YouTube. Social media changed your industry too, right? You've been around long enough to see it before Instagram existed, before every everybody became, it's like all you needed was a six pack and a ripped body and you became a fitness coach, right, Eric? And I'm going to suspect as a business person, which is what you are, is that you just kept your head down, you focused on the big picture, you focused on what got you there and your experience. And I look at your roster of customers you've worked with. I see you've been on, you know, your New York Times bestseller with the Tim Ferriss, The 4-Hour Body. So you've certainly withstood the, 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 the time, you know, the test of time and all these other fitness influencers that have come around you and you're like, no, I'm just doing my thing and I'm going to be structured and focused. I got a, I got a, I got a system and I just keep delivering it. And after and after and after, would, would I be correct with that as well? Yeah. The, the funny story I tell with this, Keith, is like my son just graduated college and uh, he's got his account in the way. And I said, the one thing you won't have to come up with, you know, fight with that I do is he doesn't have to compete with accounting enthusiasts, right? Or I have to compete with people who just like working out or look good in the mirror, who are fitness enthusiasts, that people on the surface don't see me as any different than them. And so he doesn't have to compete against that. He doesn't have to compete against, you know, shirtless mountain men on steroids eating organ meats in the middle of the woods, where I, like I have to differentiate myself from that to, to sort of let people kind of sift through the nonsense and the BS. And so also getting people to understand that fictitious cartoon like world is not applicable to them. Right. And so, you know, like I, I joke that I'll have people that come to me and say, oh, I saw this cool workout that The Rock does. Can we do that? And I'll say, okay, well, first of all, you need to go back in time. You need to be a, a Division One athlete, one of the best football teams in history. You need to take copious amounts of steroids and have really good DNA. And that'll at least get the conversation started. And I said, here's a better analogy for you. I said, do you have a financial, you know, advisor? I said, yeah. I said, okay, well, go, you know, to your financial advisor this afternoon and say, can we do The Rock's financial plan? And they'll say, no, you're crazy. The guy's worth billions of dollars. You're not. And say, well, that's just about as realistic as you doing rock the rocks workout. But you, because you have this low bar for what you see as fitness, you just assume you can copy that. And so that's where distinguishing the noise and the nonsense from what is actually real and applicable and what truly changes lives, that's the biggest difference in terms of getting messaging out there. And that's hard to get through with all the noise when there's quick fixes and hacks and 
in you know easy to follow you know type of things that you see on social media but, but they're very short-lived and, and not long last eric how does a new fitness coach in the industry today starting out gain respect what would, what would your advice be to that up-and-coming business person entrepreneur coach that says you know what i'm gonna go and build an industry like i'm gonna go build myself up like eric I see that he's had success. He's been doing this for 20 years. I see, you know, I see all of his accolades. What would you be telling that young person right now? Is that let's focus on the big rocks? Okay, so if anybody's you ever heard of the, the jar of life analogy? It's a college professor puts a jar up on the on the desk and he, he fills it with these big rocks and he says, "Is the jar full?" And everybody assumes yes. And then he, then he gets these pebbles out and he fills in the spaces between the rocks and he said, "Okay, now it's a jar full." And they say yes, and then they take sand, and that fills in the space between the pebbles and the rocks. And he said, okay, the rocks are analogous to the most important things in your life, your, your, your family, your health, those sorts of things. Your pebbles, that's your career and your next layer of, of your network and, and social circles. And the sand, that's the little things that don't matter. Well, that analogy applies to, to anything really in industries. We get so caught up in the sand if everybody's worried about, okay, what's – this coolest piece of equipment or newest technique or style when you know what the end user does not care what the end user needs to know is how can you help me so before you go and learn you know and, and get a mile deep into any one thing get a mile wide uh kelly Sturette is is a brilliant mind in my industry and he talks about being a savage generalist you need to know a lot about a lot you don't need to know a lot about one thing and so one of the biggest things you need to know learn is how to communicate Human psychology is just as important, if not more important, than physiology and, and mechanics of reps and sets and exercise. I can teach you the reps and sets and exercise part really easy, right? It's the ability to connect with people, to get them to trust you and to build rapport with them, that you are the answer for them. That is the biggest difference. And if you can do that, then you're going to be light, you know, light years in front of everybody else in this industry that thinks it's about, I have a better workout than the next you know, guy or girl down the street. I always say one thing I really love about the gym, Eric, is that it's the great equalizer in life, right? Uh, it does it, you know, 45 pounds in the gym, doesn't matter whether you're white, black, Hispanic, Asian, whether you're gay, lesbian, straight, it's 45 pounds, right? So when you put that weight on your back and you're, you're in a squat, you have one of two choices, really. You can bail or you can grind it out and get to the top. That's what I really love about just the metaphor of being in the gym and where it really is the great equalizer. And you said the psychology of it all. I, I believe it's those raw moments when you're, at least me as a customer of somebody like yourself in a gym, my friend, my, my trainer, AJ, is those moments when you're in between sets, those raw moments, those personal moments, those private moments, right? Because it's raw, it's intimate, and not intimate in a goofy way, but I'm trying to lift 500 pounds off my back right now and I'm relying on you to help me do it even though you're not helping me do it. So we have a connection there. That's really what you're selling, isn't it, Eric? Yeah, and the other elegance of, of training is that you're the only one that can really do it. Even though you're paying me as a coach, I can't do it for you. Yes. Uh, you have to ultimately do it. So it's on me to give you, to figure out the best path to motivate you to do it and to keep coming back. And, and really, you know, when we talk about mental toughness or or a lot of the BS goes around in that. It's not how, you know, it's not how hard you can ride the, you know, the, the bike or it's not how many gassers you can run. It's can you keep getting up and doing it every day even when you don't feel like it? And so that's the art of can I convince you the, the value in that versus hitting the snooze button or versus having that extra drink last night or whatever it may be and, and getting you to understand the big picture of it. Now, in those moments, if you just leave it flat at, hey, what'd you do this weekend? that's what most training is it's just so superficial and it's, there's no real connection there and that's why most trainers keep their clients for maybe you know 10 sessions or, or a six-week challenge but you know they don't have those long lasting and, and we talk about you know when we talk about really developing is the key is retention is where i've had clients for 15 20 years that have been coming to me and they keep coming back and it's not like the they it's because they need a new workout it's because I'm constantly kind of challenging them and saying, okay, well, why are you at where you're at right now? What, let's investigate a little bit further and say, okay, well, let's look into just beyond what we're going to do in our workout, but let's look at your sleep. Let's look at your stressors in life. Let's look at your nutrition. Let's look at your outlook. All those things are going to have an impact just as much, if not more than my reps. Itself. What's your view on connected fitness in 2023 and, and the way that digital technology is weaving its way into it? Platforms like 
well, any of the gadgets we wear on our bodies. Are, are you, do you support analytical data in your training or, or are you more old school? Well, again, that's the, the answer to most questions are going to be, it depends. And it, it depends because it depends on the individual. I just had this, this discussion. Uh, I have a husband and wife that I train. I trained for a long time and we were talking about some wearables. And so the, the wife was asking me, okay, well, I'm looking to get something new. And I said, okay, well, she's had sleep issues for a long time. I normally, I would say an aura ring is fantastic. It's one of the best, most reliable sleep trackers that there is. It will give you pretty good and accurate feedback on your, uh, in terms of your readiness with your HRV and so forth. Not really good for, for, for training and that feedback. And so for her, she's already neurotic about her sleep. The last thing I needed her to do is wake up and immediately check her sleep. So I'm not going to advise her. What I need to get is the right thing that's going to give her the right feedback. Where I have other people who, you know, they're, they go with, say, a whoop strap. And the, the data on whoop is not great from a lot of the experts that I've talked to, talked to. But look, you just put it on. You don't have to think. And it gives your feedback. That feedback's not super accurate. It's not super great. But it gives you some feedback as to how your actions are actually manifesting in the physiology of your body and so it works for those people who aren't going to who aren't going to wake up in the morning and do a two and a half minute recovery test who aren't going to do that kind of tracking stuff so each one is applicable uniquely to each individual depending on what is it that you're looking to get out of it if you're if you don't have the ability to adapt based on your readiness and, and change your program or you're not going to anyway then don't bother or if you're working with an athlete where I don't want it to seep into their subconscious that, hey, I'm the starting pitcher tonight and my readiness is crap. I don't want me to go out, I don't need him going out on the hill with any less confidence or any, any self-doubt in his mind. So I have to know the personality of the individual to know which device, if any, is gonna give them any value in terms of all the different wearable devices. In terms of take, taking a step further, is there a place for doing things virtually and working with it. yeah absolutely i have a virtual coaching program that i do because it allows me to access people that i could never access before it allows me to scale to work with people i never could before if you weren't in the new york new jersey area and you weren't going to get to me there was no way for me to work together so this opens up avenues where i can work with anybody around the world and help them especially if you're that type of person that you know you're not looking for a trainer to get you to work out if you need that, then go to your local gym down the street. Who's going to do that? If you are somebody who's already working out, but you don't know what to do and you need someone to show you how to work out, well, now I can work with you anywhere in the world and give you that application. So there is a, a lot of promise, but it's, it's got to be used for the right person in the right way. Accountability is the biggest challenge in, in for, for human beings. Would, would you not agree? It's and, and it's the idea of being consistent every single day. Yeah, and accountable to yourself, most important. The most important thing I teach people is that the, the difference between the people I've seen who are successful, whether it's Super Bowl champions or whether it's, you know, the executive business person, is that they have certain things that are habits or, or behaviors that they have that are non-negotiable. And that is essentially those habits are the structure of who they are. And so they are not going to let those things go. And whether it's rain or shine or whether they're tired or whether they maybe don't have the time and have to move things around, they're going to get those certain things done, whatever they are. And it, sometimes the habits, what they are, isn't as much as important as that they're getting done. So whether it's that 10 minutes of meditation, whether it's that daily mobility routine, whether it's getting in that 30 minutes of aerobic exercise, whether it's that twice a week or three times a week strength training, that those are non-negotiable for those people. And they're going to get it done. And because of that, that's really what for lack of a better term, what mental toughness is. And those people inevitably are the most successful in any of them. You've worked with pro athletes in your lifetime. Fans and people who watch pro athletes on television or see them in live sport, you know, go and you know, revere in their greatness for an hour, 60 minutes. But you know, the secret really is how they live their life for the other 23 hours, isn't it? And that's the trick that most people have a hard time doing living the life of a pro you hear coaches often say oh yeah Eric, eric's a great pro what he's really saying is eric knows how to live his life when he's not playing the game is not what he's really saying yeah somewhat and that there there are people who are in, in, in especially professional athletics that are freaks that just got gifted with the right dna and they don't eat the way they should they don't train the way they should and they still can perform at a really high level and those people are freaks and that's why we pay them millions of dollars because they're just not 
normal, you know, in terms of physically. Those people don't generally have as much staying power or, or longevity or durability, but there are freaks out there. And, you know, we can shout to the clouds that why can't I eat that and train like that and be able to do those things. That's just the way it is. But there are also for every one of them, there's also, you know, pros that, that got there because they were willing to sacrifice and make certain trade-offs and, and we all make those trade-offs you know they were the ones that you know while everybody else was hanging out and go to the parties they were the ones who were you know doing the extra work they were the ones while you know everybody else was watching netflix they were watching film those sacrifices are ultimately like what are you willing to trade and then also you know i, I always say to, to my clients you get what you tolerate they weren't going to tolerate being anything other than the, their absolute best, it's where a lot of people are okay with not being their best. And even they, though they may get frustrated with it, it's they're not frustrated enough that they're gonna do something about it. And so ultimately you get what you tolerate. Navigating a world of senior business is often navigating egos and ensuring that you know we're all lined up to go in the right direction to, to win as a business. You've worked with pro athletes, you've worked with successful business folks, Talk to me, you know, as a coach, how you navigate egos and ensure you're getting the best out of that human being without either stepping on their ego or, or pumping their ego. Yeah, and I think you actually touched on this earlier, Keith, is that once you get in this room, it's the great equalizer mm -hmm. in that it doesn't matter how much is in your wallet. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. how many people you know your name is that that, like you said, that 50 pounds is 50 pounds and you're either going to move it or you're not. And so you ultimately have to put the intent into that. You know, that's the other thing too, is that we both can do the same workout, but what intent, what focus do you put into it that I may not or vice versa? And so I can have a room or a team with a, you know, 50 players in it and, you know, they're all doing the same workout, but there's certain people that are going to get more out of that workout than others because they're pouring more into it and pouring more focus and intent and intensity into that workout and so how like they're making the most of every opportunity because every rep every set every workout is an opportunity and if you don't leverage that opportunity you know what the, the guy you're playing against on friday night or sunday afternoon if they did you know and everything else is equal then you're going to fall behind and so the same thing goes for anything is that each time you have this opportunity and this gift that I get to, to, to create this challenge that's going to make me better is how much do you push the pedal? How much do you challenge yourself? How much do you get out of your comfort zone? Which is ultimately what makes people better. What makes people great is their ability to be comfortable being uncomfortable. There's nothing great ever happened in your comfort zone. Nobody ever got landed that big job. No one never, you know, got, got a date with the prettiest girl in school. No one ever won a, a gold medal or, or a championship ring in their comfort zone. Yeah, well said. But Eric, what about the freaks? Do you just get out of their way? Do you give them their plan? You empower them and say, hey, what can I do to help? And let them do their thing. Is, is that really what you do at that point? Your number one job is don't screw them up. And, and you know, there's a lot of people who are in my industry, trainers who are touting, I work with this one and that one, and thinking they made them that way. Like that guy could have eaten potato chips and gotten that way. Like you had nothing to do with it. If your whole job is to make them feel good, and do whatever you can to as best as possible keep them healthy and try to improve their durability and longevity is that you know i used to tell guys you know i worked in the nfl for nine years and I used to say look i didn't help get you here i'm not gonna you know i'm not i'm not gonna help you make the plays necessarily on sunday but i'm hopefully here to get another year out of this so you can ride this you know this a little bit longer and so if I can just do that, if I can get them to better appreciate their body and what it can do, what it can't do, what the effects of certain behaviors will have on it, then I've done my job. I, most of us are not taking freaks and making creepier. If you can take freaks and make them play a little bit longer, then you've done your job. A little longer. You're going to go there with me. Longevity. So I'm in my 50s now, just taking my way through up to, you know, just working my way and just ensuring that I can have a lifestyle that I can keep for a long time. Let's talk longevity and lifestyle and probably the kind of clients that you work with. And if you said you had a, a, a young son graduating college, clearly you have got to crack a joke. Brian Clayton, previous guest said, clearly you have good lighting in your, you have good lighting and you don't drink alcohol. Those are two tricks, right? So, yeah, I mean, I'm right with you. I just, you just turned 51 back in ah, April. And look at I'm, you, a couple I'm young fighting, guys. 
I'm fighting and clawing, you know, the whole way down. I'm not, and, and it goes back to, to one, one of the things I said earlier is that you get what you tolerate. I'm, you know, like, I won't tolerate not being able to do the things I want to do. And so, like, we have, you know, every Thanksgiving morning, my, my wife has a bunch of friends in the neighborhood, and all the families get together, and they play a, a pickup game of football. And over the years that I've done it, a guy who's one of the dads has fallen off. And he's over drinking coffee with, with the ladies and kind of kibitzing while, you know, the guys who are actually on the field went from six to five. Four, and I'm like the last man standing. And I told my kids, like, if I'm ever over in one of those chairs, just just push me off the cliff. I have no interest in being that guy. Right. I just started this past year. And one of my loves is baseball. I just started playing 35 and older over baseball. And I'm not going to be the guy with the pinch run. I'm not going to be the guy with the knee sleeve or that can't do that. Like, I'm laying out for balls. I'm stealing bases. I'm laying out triples. I'm not going down in the rocking chair anytime soon. And so that's in terms of just what I will tolerate. And also, what there's there's a, a magic in the freedom of that. And the freedom of being able to do what you want to do, but also the freedom of not being a burden on the people around you. And I had this kind of epiphany, you know, I had the, the gift of being able to take uh, my family we went on a, on a trip to my motherland. We went to Italy this past summer awesome. and, you know, I was tracking, you know, we, I wanted to pack, I've been dying to go on this trip, so I wanted to pack it all in. So in seven days, we walked 70 miles and we hiked, we did kayaking, we did, you know, cycling, two mile bike rides with Chesney. We did all this stuff. And I, if I didn't take care of myself, we wouldn't have been able to have all those amazing experiences. And not only would I have not been able to experience it, I would have stolen that from my family. Oh, we can't go because of dad's back. Oh, we can't go because of dad's knee or dad's heart or any of that stuff. I'm not settling for that. I'm not going to take away that freedom for myself or the people around me or be a burden on those people. I want to be able to be the guy who's leading the pack so I can experience all those things that life has to offer. And so it's not that I'm in the gym three hours in the day, far from it. I just have certain non-negotiable habits and, and a certain mindset that, that there's certain things that I will not settle for. And so it allows me to, to, to do those types of things and have those types of experiences. I don't care about six packs. And, and the reality is if I came home with a six pack, nobody care anyway. It's more about that I want to allow the freedom that I want to be able to do all these things. And if you say, hey, you know, Keith, you said to me, hey, I want you to, you know, come out with us for this trip and climb that mountain. I don't want to say no. Oh, I can't because of my ankle. Like, that's something that you can control. Now, there's certain things with our health that we can't. You know, I have good friends who have had, you know, cancer, those types of things. And, and God forbid that happens. Those are things that are outside our, our control. But the things I can control, damn straight, I'm going to control them so I can allow myself that freedom. Producer Roland, we have an absolute business athlete with us today in the lab. Eric Degotti, awesome, awesome stuff. Eric, people look at you and I, our peers. I'm just going to be frank here. People look at you and I, our peers, and they say, ah, oh, it's just, ah, fuck, it's just too late. I'm in my 40s or my 50s. I don't want to go and be consistent and get structured and try to turn my life around. I've just been enjoying the wings and the beer, and I just, I'm just done. What do you say to that person? I say, look, I have wings and beer too. I just, it, I just don't have them every night, right? At, at some point, be an adult. Like some point, at some point, like make a decision that it's okay to say no. You just have to say no all the time. I don't, I'm not eating steamed chicken and broccoli and going to bed at eight o'clock every day. Like you don't have to, to. It's not. That's not what it is. Like, but you got to do something. And the fact that you're going to settle for that, like if you want to look back when it's all said and done and say, I just settled. That's a, a pretty crappy way to, to, to leave this thing. And so, you know, we all have, you always come across people that are heroes that you come across, that you see that's that 70 year old or 80 year old or 90 year old that you see that's that's going out and just crushing it. I have a, my father's cousin who went to his 80th birthday party and he's still playing tennis and stand up paddle boarding and all that stuff. And you're know, like, that is, I want to be a guy like that. Like, why can't you be that guy? Like, he's not a freak, right? People aren't paying, 80,000 people aren't showing up to see him on a Sunday. He's not a freak. He just made that decision that that's who he's going to be. That's going to be his identity. And if you're accepting that identity, that's your choice. That's not reality. That's just your choice that you don't think you have the, you know, to the strength or the capability to be there. 
and, and this is not true. I, I am, I am a, uh, at best an average athlete on a good day, right? I just, I'm just consistent and stubborn and more than anything else. I, I always say, you know, maybe other than yourself, I will be, I will always be the hardest worker in the room. I'm certainly not the most talented, perhaps not the most smartest, but I'm going to do my damnedest to outwork you because that's just how I am. It's funny. I was sitting on the couch yesterday, th- Canadian Thanksgiving and my dad's talking about, so my dad's turning 80 in three months and there's relevancy here. And he's talking about how he's, oh yeah, I start my curling next week. He's curling four days a week, right? And he's driving his 94 year old uncle around. And I looked at my, my daughter, I'm like, yeah, there's Gigi driving his 94 year old uncle around and they're gonna go curling. So just think about that for a moment, right? So, you know, you're like, they're not a couple young punks, but they've done the right things through their life to allow them to do that. And that's what I aspire to do like yourself. But I still think, not but I still think, when I see my peers and my peers look at me, they think, you know, it's just always broccoli and cauliflower. But I'm like, no, you guys don't actually know I have a peanut butter addiction. So yeah, that's what, I, that's what, that's what what's your addiction? I'm sure you have your food struggles too along the way. Uh, I mean, pizza is the greatest food that was ever oh, created. Yes. Um, and I'm, you know, doing your last name to get out of here a little bit biased, <laughs> especially in New Jersey, but you know, like, so, you know, we all have that thing and it's just a matter of, and I also have times where like, like right now, I'm, I, you know, I'm part of a, a, an education project where we just released three new courses and a mentorship and all these things where I have been, you know, to the grindstone every day. And so my diet hasn't been great. I'm not in my, you know, better shape right now, but I also didn't just say, screw it. I'm not mm-hmm. giving up. It's just, I understand that there's, this is, this is life. This is sometimes it's a little easier than others, but it doesn't mean you just give up. And, and if you look at when people, when you talk about longevity, when you look at where they have these blue zones, where people not only live to, you know, a hundred years old, but they thrive there. There's cultural expectations. There's in terms of when you see it all around you, you just assume this is how life is. When you you know, you know, there's an, an old Italian expression, when you hang around those who are crippled, you begin to limp. And so if you just see that all around you and that's what the expectation is, you assume, well, this is as far as I go. And so, you know, you need to kind of get away from that and realize that there are people who are thriving and it's not anything magical or, or mystical or special that they're doing or any different gifts that I was given or you were given other than just that we have this this kind of foresight that there's so much that we want to experience that we're not ready to give that up. Eric, we touched upon this earlier. Tim Ferriss uh, wrote a book, The 4-Hour Body, and you were uh, recognized in that book. For those that don't know what The 4-Hour Body is, and can you elaborate on the concepts, the techniques uh, discussed and how they might be relevant for our business athlete audience? Sure. So for those not, uh, those who are not aware of who Tim is, Tim is a New York Times bestselling author. His original book was The 4-Hour Work. And what that was based on is to say a lot of our time is wasted. And it's kind of the old 80-20 rules that we get most of our production, 80% of our production from 20% of our efforts. So if you take a 40-hour week, cut that down, that's essentially what he said, is I can get more done in four hours and if you know how to manipulate certain factors as far as utilizing them. Now, what happened was, is one of my mentors, Gray Cook, you know, world-known physical therapist who created uh, functional movement systems, and I'm a lead instructor for. Gray calls me, you know, a bunch of years back and says, "Hey, listen, I got this guy who's in New York. He's a New York Times bestselling author. He's doing a blurb for my book, and he wants to find out more about movement screening. He wants to go to one of our best guys. So he's in New York. Will you, you know, take care of him?" So I said, sure, you know, I'm assuming this guy's going to walk in with horn rim glasses and a you know, white goatee and in walks this, this guy in his early thirties with board shorts and bands on and just says, Hey, can you know, take, put me through some, some testing and one of your evaluations. So I did gave him some exercises, real nice guy. He's like, Hey, if you're ever out and he was living in San Francisco at the time, Hey, look me up for dinner. And I'm like, okay, cool. And didn't realize he had this whole cult following, went back and read four hour work week and and I was like, oh, that's a cool experience. Now, fast forward, like, maybe six months to a year later, we get a call at my facility, and they're like, there's this guy on the phone, and he's insisting that he work. I'm like, well, I'm not taking on clients at the time. He's like, well, me, he has to meet him. So we figure out a way. The guy finally comes in. He walks in with this big book, and he says, you're the guy. I'm like, okay, what does that mean? He's like, page 337, whatever it was. And I open up the book, and it's four-hour body. Tim never told me, right? And what he did is he went around to different people around the, the, the world and asked them about different tips on different aspects of health and fitness. So he 
he went to Joe DeFranco, who's not far from me, who's a guy I've worked back and forth with and talked to him about how he works with NFL combine athletes. And then he worked with Tracy Rifkin, who talked about using the kettlebell and the, the power of kettlebell swings. And so all these different elements of, of kind of hacking is not a good word because that, that word has now kind of gone in a different direction. But he was one of the original people to kind of hack and, and simplify things to say there's a lot of fluff out there. If you cut out all the fluff and do just these things, this is how you get your body to, to kind of your peak. And here's all the different things that you can actually consider because that was always his thing to say, I'm going to cut through all the fluff and say, how do I get this down to just the, the, the bare basics and necessities? And that's essentially what he did in that book there. Interesting. The four hour body, Tim Ferriss, if you guys are interested in learning more about that with Eric Degotti. Eric, you're also associated with the NYU Medical and the Mayo Clinic. Sports science has never been more exciting uh, with breakthroughs happening, it seems like weekly. What are some things that are exciting you when it comes to sports science and how it's going to affect us as human beings that you're seeing over, over the coming you know years? There's a couple different things, and it's kind of this perfect storm that's coming together. We mentioned wearables where the wearable market is, it, it continues to, you know, grow where you have people who, you know, you know, I see people who are at a, a social function and I'm like, is that guy like wearing a whoop strap? Like I would never pin that person to be somebody who's actually that in tune with their body and taking care of themselves where that whole market has gotten people to do a much greater awareness of the impact of what the 24 hour cycle does to them and what they do within that cycle. So, the impact, they're, even though they're not where they, I think they eventually will be, but that awareness piece is huge for the end consumer. I think that combined with the rise in popularity of people like Peter Atia, Andrew Schuberman, and so forth, where you know you're getting in the in the common vernacular, where you're getting people talking about scientists, right? Where I went and saw Dr. Huberman at the, at the Beacon here in New York, and he sold it out like. This wasn't the Allman Brothers. He was a, uh, this is a, a professor at Stanford. And it may encourage me to say that people are getting engaged in science and want to learn more about it. And they want to be more proactive because they realize that, that, you know, I'm not getting that from the medical system. I'm not getting that from the, the fitness stuff I'm seeing on social media. And I know there's more that I can accomplish. And there are people like us that are not going to go down easy. And, and what can I do proactively? And I realize this is going to be on me. So what are the steps I can take? So I think having that in the common mindset of the, the mainstream, I think is the most powerful thing. And being able to take what used to be stuff you can only get in an exercise science lab and putting it in the hands of the common user is what, what gets it more present, what gets it to be more of a cultural thing. And then when that becomes more of a cultural thing, it goes back to what I was saying before, where now more of the norm, more of your social group is more leaning towards that. And then maybe you want to jump in where you're not the outlier anymore that's doing these things. And the, the, the deeper we go, the easier it is to get accessibility, the easier and more user-friendly these types of things are. And then the more you can then make that information usable is really the key. And so having the skilled coaches that can then take this information and then say, okay, here's what all this means and here's what it means for you and here's how you're going to actually apply that information. The combination of those two worlds that we've talked about is I think what the next generation of yeah, sports science and fitness has to look forward to. Eric, I recognize you work with performance athletes, uh, high performing individuals. For many human beings on the planet, they've been waiting for the magic weight loss drug. I just want to have a pill so I don't have to go to the gym. I don't have to, you know, go on a diet. And then recently celebrities and the world started unearthing the positive benefits of Ozempic. Go on this drug and mysterious, miraculously lose all this weight. So you're in this industry for a living. You coach people for a living about these topics. Nutrition is important to you. Wellness is important to you. What's your point? Walmart is talking about how it's impacting your food sales. And, and, and the products are selling because of Ozempic. I'd love to hear your point of view on, on, on how Ozempic is becoming a cultural thing. And you've also used the term cultural a number of times on our call today. So Ozempic is a cultural thing. What's Eric's point of view on it? Everything's a trade-off. You know, I, I work with young athletes. I'm not going to, you know, BS them and say, like, steroids work, right? They do. If they didn't, like, we wouldn't have the steroid error in, in, in baseball. But here's the thing is that there's a trade-off to that, like, 
Are you willing to trade the risk for the reward? And so there's a trade-off with everything. There's a trade-off of me hitting a snooze this morning versus going, you know, getting up and working out. So the trade-off, we don't know yet what that trade-off is with something like Ozempic and what the health risks may be because, you know, we've seen this before where there's been things that, that people have taken that we thought was going to be the answer and then it turned up having horrible, horrible, you know, repercussions later. I don't know that yet, but there's going to be a trade-off because there is no, you know, free lunch in this whole thing. There's no participation trophies. In our bodies are pretty simple. You know, I explained to people that, like, Every cell in our body has one job, is to survive another day. And so if it was hot, we'd, we'd sweat to cool down. If it was cool, we'd shiver to warm up. Or if you lift these heavy things behind me, your body says, oh, my God, I don't know what you just did. I might have to get a little stronger and maybe add a little more muscle if you keep on doing that. And so, you know, that it's that simple. And when you try to hack around that, you, you're missing really the, the elegance of what you get out of this. So when I ask people, and they, and they come in, and this, again, goes back to coaches and communication. If you say to me, all right, my goal is to lose weight, I'm going to say, okay, well, how much weight? I say, okay, well, 10 pounds. And I say, okay, well, if you didn't lose 10 pounds, but you looked the way you wanted to look, would you care? Okay, I guess not. Okay, so we're going to look at your body composition versus your weight because that will tell us a little bit more, and you can actually gain some muscle, lose some fat, be the same weight you are today, but you'll look completely different. Okay, and then say, okay, well, and, and what is it ultimately that you can do when we get to that point that you can't do now? Well, I can kind of, I'll feel better about myself. All right, so now we're getting into some real territory. Here. And so say, are you going to feel better about yourself when someone says, how did you do it? And you say, oh, I just took this pill. Or are you going to feel way better about yourself and say, yeah, you know what? I've been busting my butt to get like this. And what's going to make you feel better? Because that first one's going to be fleeting. And it's almost like no one's, very few people are going out pounding their chest and saying, look, the body I got from for free, right? Mm -hmm. It's the people that earned it are the ones that are really getting the most out of it. Like, yeah, you can get a lot of things hacking around it, but it's, you know, you, you only really enjoy it when you earn it. And so, and I don't know what that trade-off is right now. I hate it, Eric, when people are like, oh, yeah, I'm grinding it out in the gym. It's a grind. Fuck, man. Be grateful. It's not a grind, actually. Enjoy the process. Like, that's what I say because it's like, I'm grateful I can be in the gym. I'm grateful I can bench a few hundred pounds. I'm grateful that I am that I have that structure in my, it's non-negotiable for me. So it's not a grind for me. And I believe for anybody listening to us right now who's kind of thinking, ah, do I want to go do that for, a, you know, the moment you can love the process, you're on your way. Is that not true? Because it's really about loving the process, isn't it? It's, it's about loving how you live your life, going to the gym, these non-negotiable things. Clearly we're, I'd say clearly we're probably very aligned, but you have to love the process, don't you, Eric? Yeah, you get to work out. You don't have to work out. Yeah. Nobody's forcing to work out. And then, you know, when we talk about the, the, the kind of mental approach to it, you know, uh, in my world in athletics, if I'm talking to a team and everything's, you know, I have to, and with the coaches there, they're talking mental toughness. And I'm like, you know what? Mental toughness isn't when you have a hard workout at practice or in the, in the weight room. Because, you know what? It ends. And you know it's going to end, and you can go home and have a protein. Nothing that tough ends with a protein shake, right? But you know what's toughness is that there's people at war right now, and they don't know when it's going to end. Mm -hmm. They don't know if it's going to end. They don't know if they're going to make it to the end of it. There's go to, go to the people that are taking chemo right now, that they don't know what's on the other side of that thing, or those people that have to work three jobs to, just to put food on the table. Like, that's toughness. Like, being able to do some repeats, some Tabata repeats on an Echo bike, like, that's that's hard. I will say it's not hard, but you know that's hard is what makes it special. You know that's not really toughness. That's not really you know something that you, you know, nobody's forcing you to do it, right? So you don't want to do it, don't. But just know there's a trade off to that, and just know that you're going to get back what you tolerate. You're going to get back what you earn, and so that's the beauty of it. It's, it's like you said, it's a great equalizer. Will some people get back a little better results than others? Yeah, but. Just like anything else in business, there's people who, you know, tripped over backwards into money because they picked their, you know, they picked the right parents. Yes. What are we going to do? You're not going to change that. So for you today, what are you going to do and, and what are you going to get back from it? What are you going to settle for? What are you going to tolerate? And realize that, you know, anything worth getting, like I said, is going to make you a little uncomfortable. It's not a matter of, it's not discomfort that you won't survive, and it's not discomfort that you can't see the other side of. Real, really hard things, that's the difference, is you don't know if you're going to come out the other side. 
I, I love something you said numerous times today, and, and I'm going to be frank and tell you I'm probably going to steal it moving forward, but you've used a slogan that I'm sure you asked your customers, and I think I might even ask some of mine, and just is the question is, what will you tolerate? Like, that's a tough question. That's a really pointed question to ask somebody because it's really saying, look in your mirror and ask yourself, what are you going to tolerate? Are you going to tolerate that? And because I don't know how somebody can look back in the mirror at themselves and say, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I like what I'm looking at right now. Like, that's a that's a pointed question, Eric. Yeah, and, and so you feel free to steal it because I didn't actually make it up either. <laughs> I actually stole it from Jay Hinch was the manager of the Houston Astros, and he got fired because when they had the cheating scandal, they he was the fall guy for it. And, you know, instead of turning around and blaming his players, whose players were the ones who kept it going, and even though he said every day, guys, I don't like this, I don't want you to do it, ultimately he, he said, he goes, you get what you tolerate. He goes, I, I didn't do it, but I tolerated it, and I was in charge. And so ultimately that's it's my responsibility, and that's why I don't have a job right now. And so I really respected when he said that, and that's why I stole that, because it, 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 it applies so elegantly to what I do every day. Yeah, you, t- it, it, you take ownership of that statement, and when you put that question towards somebody, it really, I think it makes them ask that question of themselves, right? So I love that. I love that a lot. Eric, wrapping up our conversation, I'm going to ask if you want to plug a couple things for, in, in a second here, but I have to tell you, so we're similar of age, and I'm recognizing what the YouTube thumbnail is going to be. I'm sure you've been told this in your lifetime. You are a young Lou Ferrigno. You're, the, you're a young, incredible Hulk. You know, Lou Ferrigno's about twice my height. So <laughs> if Lou Ferrigno shrunk, but you know, the incredible he's, Hulk. he's, you know, you know, he's somebody that, that, that also overcame a lot of different things to get where he got. And, and, you know, I was listening to an interview because he's got a new book coming out, which actually came out today is Arnold Schwarzenegger was talking about mm-hmm. right now and said, he's one of the hardest workers I ever came across in bodybuilding. And so, you know, in terms of what he was able to accomplish, with the, the things he had overcome, yeah, it, it, he's a pretty remarkable guy. You brought him up. I didn't. Arnold, legend. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And yeah. for so many reasons. Yes. And so many reasons because he made determinations of what he wanted to be and wasn't settling for, for anything else. There's great stories that he shares of how he could have taken, you know, the easy money on the table and he said no, you know, and said, I'm going to be something bigger than that. And if, if he did any one of the things he did, whether it was Mr. Olympia, whether it was, you know, being the face of, of, of bodybuilding and making it what it was and, or, and, you know, what he did in acting or what he did in politics, any one of those things would have been absolutely remarkable from somebody who grew up with his upbringing in Austria. And to do all three of them in his lifetime is, is, is astonishing. And he he's a perfect example of taking ownership and, really committing himself to something and believing himself. I've never seen anybody who's been a better advertisement for betting on yourself. than. I know you have to go here. We're wrapping up on an hour. You've been really grateful with your time quickly uh, about Arnold. I don't know if you recently read his quote, but he talked about how aging sucks and how he's looking in the mirror. And, you know, he's like, Oh man, where I used to have a big peck. I now have this hanging flabby skin. And I loved his vulnerability, Eric, because like yourself, I grew up with Arnold as well, and he's a legend in my eyes. To, so to see him be like my dad, vulnerable, is remarkable because we're seeing the next chapter of Arnold as a human being, aren't we? Yeah, and in, in vulnerability, there's actually a tremendous amount of strength. Yes. Um, and being able to do that and being able to, you know, be able to say, like, I'm not perfect, you know, and, and so it, and it's okay. I think that's a tremendous amount of strength for him to do that. You're talking about somebody who – is the epitome of of this of the aesthetic of looking perfect. He was the best body in the world for for a generation, and so to be able to have that vulnerability and say, you know what, I'm not that guy, but I'm still pretty damn good. That's really strength in itself. I never thought about it the way you just put it, but he he was the body for an entire generation, and I was part of that generation. So that's uh, well, well well said, Eric Degotti. Professional strength coach, professional coach out of, out of New Jersey, New York. Anything you want to close off with today before we say goodbye? The conversation has gone a lot of different ways, and it's been a lot of fun. One of the things that, that I think to, to wrap it all up with any of the aspects, whether it's the business or the fitness or, or high performance, it's ultimately that every decision you make has has a, a repercussion. Every action has an equal reaction. And whether you decide to go for, you know, 
that extra beer tonight or whether you decide to sleep in that extra 15 minutes. And all those things are going to have repercussions. Now, you don't see an immediate repercussion. Like I saw a really cute video of some little kid working out in the gym, and he does a set exercise, and he lifts up his shirt, and he looks down at his belly, and he puts it back down, and then he keeps working out. And I'm like, it doesn't work that way. I wish it did. But, you know, realize that you're just putting depo- you know, small deposits in or you're making small withdrawals. And ultimately, your account balance is the sum of all those things. And so if you're not where you are or where you want to be, you have to go back and look at those habits, those behaviors and those decisions ultimately to say, okay, if I, it's not where I want it to be, well, what are you going to change about? It? What is going to be different today versus yesterday? Because, you know, the insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. And so being able to have the courage to make that change and even if you are that guy, like you mentioned earlier, Keith, where I'm 50, it's over for me, I'm washed up, whatever, like cha- making that decision that I'm going to be somebody else. And there's a powerful statement in that, actually still is from Dr. Lane Norton, uh, who's mm-hmm. brilliant. And he talked about Ethan Supli, the actor, who used to be a huge guy. He was in Remember the Titans, and he was over 300 pounds. And he said, the only way I was able to change myself is I had to kill that former self. I had to be okay with letting that former self and that identity go away and die. And sometimes he tries to creep back in and I have to have to push that away. And so you have to be okay that you're, you have to remove that former self. If you're going to be somebody different, if you're going to continue walking in that same shell with that same mindset, nothing's going to change. And so that is ultimately the, the, the hardest step of all this. My, my partner, Mike Perry, has a great gym in the Boston area, and he says the heaviest weight in the gym is that front door, right? And if you can get through that and shed that that former self and say, I'm committing to be this person from now on, and I'm not going to tolerate anything less, that's where real change happens. Eric, you definitely an adopted business athlete for sure. I will tell you, which is why we're introducing that experience next year with the metaphor of, of trekking and trekking mountains, because like myself, I've gone through my personal journey in life and I use mountains as a metaphor to just shed my skin and shed my former self. Because I don't know anybody in my life, when you climb a mountain, you never go back the other way and you never look back and say, oh, I regret that, right? So I've used mountains and we're introducing these trekking experiences next year as part of Transformation 24 to help people shed their old self. When you look on the other side of that physical mountain, that person's over there. You're now here and you can see that journey. So that's why we've introduced that as part of our experience. So I, I really like how you articulated that. Eric, I've thoroughly enjoyed the chat. I hope you'll come back and join me again. I, I, I could talk for hours about Dr. Lane Norton and protein and macros as well. So I think that there's probably a ton of other topics we can introduce. I think I need to get AJ and Craig. So when I look at your resume, my, my colleague, Craig, Dr. Craig Slomlight, very similar experiences to yours. The same with my other partner, AJ Zeglin. I'm sure the four of us around the table would have some really exciting chats. Eric, thanks for joining me today live in the lab. Absolutely. Awesome. Stick around for a second while I say goodbye to the audience here and uh, I'll walk you out here. Everybody, Keith Bellis here, live in the lab. We are closing out a Tuesday show with Eric Degatti, performance coach. If you're looking for some uh, virtual coaching, you can find him on LinkedIn. You can probably find him on Instagram. We'll make sure you, you'll, you'll see him in, our, in the stuff we're sending out along the way. Hope you guys enjoyed today's show, Business Athletics Performance. Join us tomorrow live in the lab, live in the Business Athlete Performance Lab. And again, if you're looking to transform your life, don't forget about Transformation 24. Limited spots available, 10 people. Come join us. We'll help you create a structured life sustainable for the entire year and ideally beyond that. I'm Keith. I'm live in the lab. I'm live in the Business Athlete Performance Lab.